This video is designed to teach you about osmosis. Uh, before we can talk about the way osmosis actually works, we have to define a few simple things that establish what osmosis is. Uh, for the first thing that we're going to start talking about, osmosis is the movement of water. Now the key is, it's not just moving anywhere, it's the movement of water across a membrane. Now this is key because we talked about the cell membrane going around the outside of the cell, and this is going to really be the movement of water in and out of a cell, is the idea of osmosis, at least the way we're going to be looking at this idea of uh, this chapter. The key thing when it comes to understanding osmosis is understanding something called solute. Uh, what solute is, is anything dissolved in water. Now typically for our purposes these will be things like sugar and salt. Uh, other things like that that are commonly dissolved in water around a cell. An easy way to think of osmosis is think of what would happen to a cell if you took it, you put it in pure water, which water would have no solute, since solute is anything that's dissolved in water. And then what would happen if you took a cell and you put it in salt water? Uh, that'll actually kind of follow along with the example that we're looking at next. But in order to understand the example, you have to remember these two things. That osmosis is the movement of water across a membrane, and solute is going to be anything that's dissolved in water. So to look at an example of osmosis, we're going to examine a red blood cell. That's what's supposed to be in these little containers. Now obviously a red blood cell is very, very small. Uh, it's actually one of the smallest types of cells in your body, but um, to be able to see it clearly here, it's, it's shown in a very large size. But keep in mind that the size of this cell is greatly exaggerated. Uh, you would uh, have a hard time seeing this clearly, even with one of the microscopes that we have in class. Your red blood cells are pretty tiny. Uh, but to, uh, to run you through how osmosis works, it makes for a good example. We'll start off with the solution on the left. First thing to take note of is up here at the top. It says it's a hypotonic solution. What that's talking about is the solution that's surrounding the red blood cell. Hypo means low. I can sort of remember that one. So if you're hypoglycemic, you've got low blood sugar. If you're experiencing hypothermia, your body temperature is getting very, very low. Uh, what this is telling us is there is less solute, there's less stuff, dissolved in the water than there is inside of the cell. So if we're looking at this one, you can see that we've got a few little pieces of solute on the outside here, but far more of them than uh, that we have inside the cell. When it comes to osmosis, water is going to follow the solute. So you can see there's more solute inside the cell. All these little sort of purplish dots represent the solute than there is outside the cell. So if the water follows the solute, that means in this particular example, the cell is going to swell up. Now, a red blood cell should naturally look like this one on this side, but in this example, since there's more solute inside the cell than outside, the water follows the solute and the cell starts to swell. So we're going to kind of take this down as a note over here that water follows the solute. Now if we look at our next example, this one is a hypertonic solution. Hyper is telling us that there's now more solute outside of the cell than inside. So for hyper, we're going with more or high. So now there's more solute outside the cell than inside. If we're looking at our picture, you can see again all those little sort of dark blue or purple looking dots. They represent the solute. There's lots and lots and lots of them out here. Only one, two, three, four, five of them inside of the cell. Again, remember, the water follows the solute. So if there's more solute outside the cell, you can see a lot of the water is leaving. It's leaving the cell and the cell shrivels up. 
the cell starts to get very, very tiny. So we've got our net water loss, the cell is shrinking. The last one is the isotonic solution. Iso is even. Uh, the nice thing about an isotonic solution is the concentration of solute is pretty much the same. So we have basically the same amount of solute outside the cell as we do inside. So now our little red blood cell is doing just fine. It's not swollen up like it is in the hypotonic solution, and it's not shrinking like it is in the hypertonic solution. It's doing just fine. An example of something that would be isotonic would be saline. If you go to the doctor and you get an IV, an IV saline solution, um, something like contact solution is saline solution. That means it's isotonic, it's even with our body fluids. Just like this red blood cell, which would be one of the things inside your body. A hypertonic solution is going to have more solute than whatever it is that you're talking about, so that's going to cause it to shrink. Uh, an example of something like that would be if you took your cell and you put it in salt water from the ocean, let's say. Um, the last one would be the hypotonic solution. In a perfect scenario, this one would be distilled water, which is a solution that has no solute in it at all. Since it has no solute and water follows the solute, water is going to end up streaming inside the cell and getting uh, the cell to the point where it will swell or possibly even burst. So I know this was a little bit more complicated and a little bit longer than some of the other videos, but osmosis is a slightly more complex idea. I will experience this one a little bit in class with the egg lab. You'll actually see what happens if you take a cell and you're putting it in different solutions overnight. It's going to react just like these individual um, red blood cells do inside the different solutions here. So as always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in class.